What's up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Ricky and I am the owner and creator here at Marley May Customs. It has been a while since I have uploaded a tutorial here on YouTube, but it is one of my goals this year to post more videos here and be more consistent. So I have a running list going. I'm going to try to upload once a week. I'm going to try. But today I have a really fun Tumblr tutorial that was inspired by a can koozie design that I saw on Etsy. I will have a picture of it right here and the shop name is Clementine's Design Co. I had an idea in mind for this Let's Go Girls decal. Well, not this decal specifically, but just the saying Let's Go Girls. Um, but once I found this can koozie design, I knew that's what I had to do. So here is my take on it. I translated it over to a Tumblr. Let me know what you guys think. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up and let's get into the video. So as always, I am starting out with a fully prepped and sanded cup. This is a 20 ounce screw top from Craft Haven. I absolutely love these. They are so pretty when they're fully done. It was really cold when I filmed this video, so instead of using spray paint, I used uh, Primetime from CCDIY, and it does come in a can, but I transferred it over to a condiment bottle. It makes it so much easier to apply. I got those from Amazon, and I'll have them linked down below. I went in with one coat. Um, I use pretty thick layers because if you don't use thick layers, uh, it starts to dry a little bit too fast, and then you get the streaks and the pulling up of the paint and everything like that. So I went in with this coat and let that dry completely before I went in with a second coat. While that first coat of CCDIY Primetime was drying, I went ahead and painted the lid to get it prepped for rhinestones. This just makes it so the rhinestones blend a little better and you won't be able to see the stainless. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to have a coat of whatever color rhinestones you're going to use. Once the first layer of prime time was dry, I went right in with my second coat and while that was still wet, I went ahead and applied my glitter directly on top of the wet paint. Um, and I'm so sorry I forgot to press record when I first started glittering. I know it's super satisfying to see the glitter process, but yeah, I forgot to press record. But this is So Icy from Glitter Dip Sips. I do have a discount code with them. It is Marley May 10 and that will save you 10% off your whole order. I'll have that in the description box as well. So a little trick I like to use for chunky glitter is to roll it up in wax paper like you see here. That helps to lay all that chunky glitter down really flat so you don't have to do a whole lot of sanding once you epoxy. And then I'll just take my finger along both rims and just knock off any extra that might give us trouble once we epoxy. I let that dry for a couple of hours because the prime time does stay wet for a little bit, um, but once it is dry, you can go in with your first layer of epoxy. I applied 30 mils of CCDIY Artist Resin and I let that dry for about four to six hours. And then I went in directly with another layer of epoxy. I used another 30 mils of CCDIY Artist Resin. Make sure to use your torch to get all those bubbles out. Once your epoxy has a chance to dry for about 8 to 12 hours, you are ready for your decals. And this is the layered fuzzy leopard file from Bear Trends Digi Design on Etsy. I will have that link down below. It is one of my favorite leopard files ever. I use it all the time. You might see me struggling a little bit to get these pieces of vinyl off, 
um I need a new Cricut blade very badly and I just haven't bought one yet so I did struggle a little bit but in the end it looks so good I absolutely love this file and it was perfect for this design After decals, you are ready for your next coat of epoxy. I used 20 mils of CCDIY Artist Resin for this coat, and you are gonna want to let this dry for about eight to 12 hours, depending on your dry time of the epoxy you use. Once that layer of epoxy is dry, you are ready for your water slide decals. This is a cowhide, um, fuzzy cowhide image that I found on Google. I printed out three of them, but I think I only used two because I did cut out um, the cowhide patches and applied them separately. There really isn't any rhyme or reason to this. Just cut it how you like it and go with the flow. The water slide paper I used for this cup was the Hippo water slide paper. I just recently started using this and I really, really love it. It prints very vibrantly and it's very easy to work with. So. I highly recommend this paper if you are looking for a new water slide paper or you just want to try something new. If you don't have one of these silicone brush tools, I absolutely recommend getting one. It has changed the game for me when applying water slide decals. It really helps to get all that water out so you don't have any bubbles show up later on. Once you do get your decals applied, you're going to want to dry them really well with a paper towel. Um, Again, just so you don't get any bubbles later on. Sometimes uh, bubbles will show up later on after your water slide dries a little bit and it's, it's not fun. So just make sure everything is really, really dry before you go into your next step. And for this, I just used a teal paint color. Um, I'll have the name listed down below. I cannot see it, what the name is on my screen, so I'm going to have to look. I just used these cheap brushes that I got, I think, off Amazon. Maybe one of them came from the dollar store. This bigger one I absolutely love for wood grains. It is, like, the perfect texture. You just want to make sure you use a brush that is easy to flick because you're going to be flicking the paint onto your cup. So I applied this cowhide water slide in kind of like a swirl pattern. And from the design that I used for inspiration, this teal paint flicks were over top of the cowhide. So I just followed that swirl pattern and tried to flick my paint in that swirl pattern on top of the cowhide. It's okay if you get a little bit messy because we can go in after it's dry with some alcohol and a Q-tip and any stray um, areas of paint you can just clean off with the alcohol and Q-tip. So don't worry, just have fun with it and you really can't mess this up. After the paint was dry, it didn't take very long, maybe 10, 20 minutes. I went in with alcohol on a Q-tip and just cleaned up a little bit of stray paint. There wasn't too much. There was just a couple spots that didn't really fit. After you clean up your paint, you are ready for your next step. You can go right into this step. You don't have to epoxy or anything. 
I went in with the Tacket Over and Over Glue on a paintbrush and just kind of followed that swirl pattern that we had going with the cowhide in the paint and I just painted that Tacket on. And the glitter I used for this is Confetti Popper, also from Glitter Dip Sips. It is so pretty. I just poured the glitter out onto my wax paper because there is some snowflake pieces in this glitter and I didn't want snowflakes on my cup. So I just tried to pick around those and I just sprinkled that over top of the tacket and you're ready for your next layer of epoxy. For this coat, I used 30 mils of CC DIY Artist Resin to ensure that the glitter was fully sealed. After that coat of epoxy has a chance to dry for 8 to 12 hours, depending on what epoxy you are using, you are ready for your decal. This Let's Go Girls PNG is from the same Etsy shop that this design was inspired by, and I printed it out on clear water slide. But since I have so much going on on the cup, you won't be able to see it on clear water slide. So a trick I like to do when I need an opaque decal that I don't want to print out on white water slide is to cut the same exact image with white vinyl. Then you're going to apply your white vinyl and you can apply your water slide decal right over top of it. You don't have to epoxy and you have a perfectly opaque decal. It is one of my favorite tricks. I absolutely love doing this. Once that water slide has a chance to fully dry, it is time for the final coats of epoxy. I used 20 mils of CC DIY Artist Resin and I epoxied until smooth. It took two final coats for this cup to be completely smooth. Here is what the lid looks like once it is completed. I didn't film this part because it would have made this tutorial way too long. So if you guys do want to see how I rhinestone a lid, I can absolutely do that. Just let me know in the comments. I used SS20 rhinestones for the entire lid. And here is what the cup looks like when it is completely finished. I absolutely love how it turned out. Be sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out so much. I can't wait to see you guys in the next tutorial and I'll talk to you soon.